very special girl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you think I know. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. God is love. And all the time. I want to welcome everyone here today. And I'd also like to welcome Marcel, our, our guest preacher for today. We're so happy to have her here with us. Welcome her. Okay, if not, we will stand and sing our gathering hymn, number 139, Praise the Lord, the Almighty.
please remain standing and join me in the call to worship. Today we celebrate the spirit of the past and the present. We recall the coming of the spirit on the apostles, which enabled them to begin preaching the gospel to the world. A little over 2,000 years ago, on the Jewish Feast of Pentecost, the apostles left the upper room where they had been hiding for fear of the Jews and went out fearlessly to preach the gospel to the world. They could not have done this without the Holy Spirit, the power from on high. That day, a new community, the Christian Church, was born. We rejoice that the same Spirit is here with us today. Amen. Please join me for the prayer of invocation. O oh God, who on this day did teach the hearts of your faithful people by sending them to the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in the holy comfort through the merits of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. As we celebrate our joining together as Christians to worship this morning, let us pass with one another the signs of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Times of time recount the news, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell, was that someone you Just take him at his prom. 
This time, as a community, we enter into our time of prayer, sharing with one another and with God. Our prayers of celebration is where, as well as our prayers of intercession and petition. And so are there any prayers to be shared this morning, or any prayer requests, or celebrations? And Lynn? For the past uh, 18 months, people in the church have been praying for my grand great-grandson. I'm pleased to announce he had his last chemo treatment on Wednesday, and he gets his CAT scan and ultrasound tomorrow, and we don't expect any problems. So we're just thankful, and please pray for him for tomorrow. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we had another one over here. So good morning. I have a joy, and I'm going to sneak in a little bit of an announcement, too. Um, so, uh, so for those of you who pulled in the parking lot, did you notice anything different? We're getting ready for a festival. Um, so my joy is that um, So this year we were accepted again for the uh, in, inmate work release program, which is always such a blessing to the church. But I have to tell you, about a week before I got a call, and I said, I have good, mad, good news and bad news. I said, OK. Some of the good news, you're still scheduled. Bad news is only for two days. And we didn't know if they could get the work done in two days. And then if you saw the weather forecast at the beginning of the week, the two days didn't look good. Well, the rain held out. It held out. It was beautiful weather. The guys came. They worked so hard. They got everything set up. And then um, so on Thursday, as I was on my way to spend the day golfing with my father, which again is another joy, um, I get a call. And he says, our job for tomorrow has been canceled. Would you like us to come back and clean up your flower beds? <gasps> exactly. So if you've came around the front of the church, hopefully you've noticed how nice everything looks. So it was an absolute joy to have them here. Um, you know, it's, they're such a blessing to us. And, um, you know, it, one of the things that we get to do as a church is we get to show them that they're appreciated, that their work is really valued. And, you know, I always try to plant the seed that, you know, when you're when you get out on parole, there is a church waiting for you, and three of them will be going home to their families and wish them the best of luck and, you know, just reminded them of all the work they did here. Any church around them could be, would be so happy to have them. So hopefully that we planted that seed. So I'm so grateful for that. And also I um, have another joy, so thankful to the work of Jane and Pam. They're downstairs cooking for the graduates at the moment. But um, our offer to... Um, extend a gift to the um, 36 families that we support at Head Start with our backpack program to come and be guests at the festival has been received. So they'll be receiving their packets tomorrow so their families can come and have a meal on the church. And, um, you know, the kids will get the pack of tickets like the Sunday school kids do for the games. And hopefully those kids will have a good experience. And while they're here, they'll ask to come back for vacation Bible school. Amen. So those are my joys. My joy from you is if you would take the flyer and pass it out so we get more people at the festival. That would be also a joy. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Well, my joy is that Pastor Poe is back. So uh, let's give her a welcome. <laughs> Last week, I was asking you all for, for prayers for Pastor that you could pass, and uh, 
an examination of such to uh, go to Tiffany Court. And she did that in flame colors, and she is now at Tiffany Court. So I uh, should appreciate any of your visits, I'm sure. Uh, 108, I'll give your address away. Tiffany Court. Now, we have about half of her, her uh, belongings are moved from Wesley Village, but we're going to do some more moving this afternoon. If anyone uh, would like to help, uh, uh, I think we're down to about 2,000 books yet. <laughs> have to move. It's like moving Master Hat, I should say. But anyway, if anybody would like to help, uh, see me after church. Uh, because of the weather, I might have to change some things around, so I won't just show up. But we're planning on doing that about 3 o'clock this afternoon at Wesley Village. Some of it's going to storage, and some of it is going to go to uh, her apartment at Tiffany Court. So see me after church if you have any time available to help move this afternoon. Thank you. Hi, uh, I have a brother, David, and he is strug struggling with um, a work project right now. And he is, he's such a good guy. He's been so generous to everyone in the past. And I would just wish some prayers to be sent for him. Thank you. Amen. Um, I would like some prayers for our graduates. Um, today we have our graduates brunch downstairs, and um, so we sort sort of celebrate that today too. Um, we have the following graduated: Jamie Williams, uh, Rachel Smith, Ryan Kelly, Erica Fletcher, Chris Yanovich, and Brooke Yanovich. And I'd like prayers for them as they um, enter the working world. And uh, I have an announcement, too. Um, we're going to have the brunch after church. It was people signed up for it, but you don't have to have signed up to come. That only gives us an idea of what number we'd have. Everybody is welcome. Thank you. Are any of our graduates here this morning? If you could please stand. And I'm going to ask if the three of you could come forward here, please. We have also two other prayer requests, one for Frank, for Beth, um, Frank Sante, as well as for Bethany Sante. Our, and I see a hand in the back. Um, it's a blessing and continued prayer. Thank God John Singer is with us today. He was taken to the hospital for um, a hernia and a, some problems, but he's got to be careful, so keep him in your prayers. Amen. Any other prayers or requests? Continued prayer requests for my brother-in-law, Kevin, who's going through um, cancer treatments and had a little bit of a setback this week. If there are no others, let us join our hearts and spirits together in prayer.
Holy God, we thank you so much for all that you continue to do for us. We thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to be here and worship and glorify you. We also thank you, God, for hearing and receiving our prayers. Lord, continue to be with those who are in the midst of healing. Grant them strength and encouragement, and let your healing power continue to flow over them and through them, restoring their bodies, their minds, and their spirits, that they may continue to be in your service. We thank you, God, for those who can have completed a course of education, and that you would continue to be with them, guiding them, God, in wisdom and discernment, as well as helping them to grow and mature in faith as they follow your Son, Jesus Christ. Continue to be with those who are looking for changes in their lives, Lord, whether it be for homes or for jobs or whatever their situation. You know what it is, God, and we trust that you will work out your marvelous plan for them. And continue to be with this community of faith, Lord, as we go forward serving you with upcoming events and other ways of reaching others and helping them to know of your love and mercy. We also pray, Lord, for the prayers that were not spoken, but the ones that you were able to hear. And we know, God, that even now you're in the midst of answering those prayers and responding to them. Lord, hear all of our prayers, receive them all, and continue to let your spirit work among us, building our trust and confidence in how you will work everything out. And thank you, God, again, for all the ways that you are blessing us and providing for us and continuing to remind us of your presence and your love for us. God, receive our prayers and receive them in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now hear the word of God. Please join me for the responsive reading of Psalms 104, which can be found on page 826 in your hymnal or up on the screen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, and cover yourself with light as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent, and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the cloud your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the wind your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be shaken. Cover the earth with the as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took you to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, while athletes quench their thirst. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nests. They sing among the branches. From your lofty place, water the mountains. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan whom you form to play in it. These all look up to you. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. When you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He touches the mountains. 
I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The first lesson is Acts 2, number 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost has come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Reading from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 3b to 13. Please stand if you are able. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them for everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord.
go to our next hymn, which is number 2150, The Faith We Sing, and the words will be on the screen. seated. says that it's on. A red light flashed. Good? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> and so, the work of the Holy Spirit continues today. And we see it in the, in the words given by Paul in Corinthians passage. Because that work of Christ needed to continue. And so in 1 Corinthians, um, verse 7, we hear these words. Um, but the same word. And everyone, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And so what is this common good? In other words, the Spirit is given to the followers of Christ to continue that good work of Jesus Christ in the world. He is not with us physically. And is depending upon us to continue his work. And he had promised that he would send someone to help us with that. And on Pentecost, he kept that promise with the sending of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is that in the Give 
given to us, the church, so that the kingdom of God can reach its fulfillment. And that work continues to enable, enabling us. That spirit continues empowering us and guiding us. However, there are many, believe it or not, there are many followers who are thinking, and you know what? I have nothing to offer. I have no talent. I have no gifts. I have nothing I can give. There's nothing I can do to help the church. And so they're not contributing their gifts to this work of Christ that needs to continue. And without everyone's participation, the picture is incomplete. The work of Christ is incomplete. How many people here love doing puzzles? Raise your hand. Yeah, almost half. Okay. And so even you're doing a puzzle and you're finding all the pieces, what happens, well, no, let, let me ask you this instead. Which is the most important piece for making that puzzle complete? The last piece. What happens if you don't have that last piece? You go crazy? How's your, are you ready to frame your puzzle and hang it up on the wall? Yeah, you don't. Because there, there's something missing. It's incomplete. The picture isn't the right picture if there's one piece missing. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> And I don't know too many people who want to go around proudly saying, this is my puzzle. Okay, it's just missing one piece, but isn't this a beautiful picture? Oh, no, it's not. There's something missing. It's incomplete. And so, we're going to do a puzzle together. I handed out some postcards to people early. And so, what I would like to ask is the person with number one, Raise your hand. Okay, can we put out the first piece of our puzzle, please? Okay. Is that a gorgeous picture or what? <laughs> yeah, 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 you're laughing. Okay, let's add another. Number two. Where are you? Okay, second piece. missing our sound. Yeah, there's supposed to be music that goes, and there's sound that goes with this. Oh, they're trying. <laughs>
Everyone has gifts. You cannot say, no one can say you've been baptized in Christ, oh, I have no gifts, I have no talent, I can't do anything. That's impossible. And I will tell you why. You open up your hymnals and turn to page 37. When you were baptized, either as a child or as an adult, these words were spoken over you as the pastor laid his or her hand upon your head. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit worked within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. What that means, born through the Spirit. Through that prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit was activated within you to allow you to be that faithful disciple, meaning to allow you to use the gifts that God had placed within you to carry on the work of Jesus Christ. That is what it means to be a disciple, a learner of Christ, and carrying on the work of Christ as we follow the way of Christ. And so each one has something to contribute to the picture. And if we don't know what our gifts are, it's our responsibility to find out. Either through spiritual gifts inventory or simply going and ask someone, hey, what do you think I'm good at? Or taking a look at our lives, what have I been good at? Everyone has gifts. God has placed one or more within all of us. And when we were baptized, that's Spirit was activated, and we were primed to, to be ready to serve Jesus Christ and carry on his work. The life of a church, the complete picture of a church, cannot happen unless each of the persons within that church, or God, within God's mighty church, contributes the gifts that God has given us. The gifts were given to us to just, for us to feel good about. The gifts were given to us so that the work of Jesus and so, once we discover those gifts and what they are, our next step is to add them to the picture. The picture of the church as God intends it to be. To work for that common good. The mission and ministry of Jesus Christ in the world, in the church today. You are good at something. If you are in this church, it is because God knew that your gifts were needed to make the picture complete. God knew that you were one of the missing pieces needed for the picture of ministry and mission in this church. And, and that the work of the body would not be complete without you. And so each of us needs to be participating. Each of us needs to be contributing our gifts, our peace to the picture. No matter how young, no matter how old, all have gifts to contribute. And God has us where we are for that reason. We contribute those gifts for the overall common good, the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ in the places where we find ourselves. And so the work of this church cannot be complete. This church cannot be what God intends it to be, it cannot be the picture that God has in mind unless every piece Everyone contributes the gifts. We need all of the pieces. Let me tell you about a woman from my home church. My, my home pastor, there's a lot of stuff I learned while I was at that church and a lot of things that I remember. But one of the things that he was teaching us and talking to me about spiritual gifts and the part that we all play in the church, he told me about Magnolia Barnes. Magnolia Barnes was an older member of our church who could not often get to church because she's an older woman and she didn't drive unless someone could pick her up and bring her she wasn't able to attend church. And it was just getting more and more difficult as well for her to be at church. And Magnolia Barnes was um, the, the quintessential southern lady. She dressed great. She looked great. And she was an older black woman from the south. And if you know, your hats are everywhere. You're an older black woman from the south. 
you dress for church. Magnolia Barn was that, you know, proper, beautiful southern lady. Um, but she just could, she, she was getting up there. She just couldn't be at church and involved as she wanted to be. But because she was a proper southern lady, and she, and she was on a certain age, she had magnificent handwriting. Well, people knew how to write. <laughs> Nowadays, I see this stuff. I don't know what they call it, but people tell me that's their name. Uh, you know, I, I don't get it. But she knew how to write. And so Magnolia's gift is her beautiful memory. And so the way she participated, the way her piece fit into the puzzle of the picture of our church was that past, my pastor asked her if she would write all of our things. We have an opportunity to give to God in one of the ways that is available to us, and that is the giving of our time and offering. And, and that our work in allows the work of Christ to continue in different places and different ways. And so I invite the ushers to come forward for the offering. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. I surrender. Thank you. 
service can be found on page 13 in the hymnal. This is an open table. It is, this is Christ's table. And so all who are seeking to be in good relationship with Christ and follow his way are invited to partake. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give it to the Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, <coughs> your spirit upon him, he turned away the, the, the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him, he preached good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed, and to attend to announce the time that had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised he to be with us always, sending us the Holy Spirit and the Spirit and fire on the, on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take in me, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this every time in remembrance.
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is given to you, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Post-communion prayer can be found in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to abide in your church and with us until the end of time, bestow upon us and all your faithful people your many gifts of grace, that with hearts and minds enlightened by your Spirit, hearts encouraged by your presence, we may day by day be strengthened with power to carry out the work of Christ. Through the same Jesus the Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing song is number 2175 in the faith we sing the words of the other board. Together we serve. Um, I'm told this is probably an unfamiliar um, song to you, but the tune you will recognize from a couple of um, hymns in the hymn. Together we serve, may we stand and sing together, 2175. <laughs>
able to do that through the power of Christ's Holy Spirit. That Spirit has been given to us. It has been activated within us. So let us go forth in the knowledge, in the power, in the joy that the grace of God's Holy Spirit goes with us. And through that Spirit, we are able to unite our gifts to complete the picture of ministry that God has for this church and for the world. Go forth in the strength and the power and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.